Well, happy fam shine, suddenly. Happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back. We're here with an unexpected yet urgent message from Hat J. And, and DG would like to say hi. She's going to get her two cents in on this. Say, say hello to everyone. Mwah. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Ah. Ah. Huh? There you go. There we go. All right. Down on the floor you go. Okay. Well, we've definitely got some interesting things to read to you guys here. Let's head on over to the IUV website. This was posted yesterday. Hat J, urgent message out from Heather, April 13th, 2018. A side note from BZ, also see the Knox County Sheriff's Office inmate manual for 2018. You can download it here. So Heather sent an email out. <clears throat> She's inmate ID number 136-9008, Heather Tucci Giraffe. Subject is a message for Francis. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my kitty cat in the background. She's being talkative now. All right, uh, the subject line is purchase a gold pass for Heather Tucci Giraffe. Um, if you go to the jailatm.com, you will find that a gold pass uh, basically keeps, if I remember correctly, keeps Heather in contact with a tablet device for approximately a week. So to Francis Lloyd Esquire from Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. Let's can we increase the size of this text for everyone out there in YouTube land? All right. A suspect incident involving the officer's supervisor's mental health or MH department or MH official presiding at RDWDF. <clears throat> And this is the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility. That's what that acronym stands for. <clears throat> so uh, there was a suspect incident that occurred there today. The purpose of this email is to keep you and all teams informed. Documentation slash record of events, actions, and inactions regarding human rights abuse operations and identification of said operations and perpetrators for further appropriate action under applicable executive orders and universal laws. <clears throat> Yesterday, the toilet in our cell at the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility, uh, 2A, I believe, is the block, and 111 is the cell number. So their toilet flooded their room, it appeared to be from an incoming pipe, not from an outgoing pipe leakage. However, I did call the emergency in on the cell intercoms. Officer Stringer responded immediately to assess and officially take action. Eventually, an unidentified official made the decision to move us to Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility 2 d slash. 110. So they moved from the A block 2A over to 2D and into cell 110. This is the maximum disciplinary pod. Isn't it interesting that uh, the county jail that I used to work in, <clears throat> uh, the disciplinary block or the high security block was also named D. It was called D block. So uh, they moved them to the max disciplinary pod until it was fixed or until they were reassigned to a different open pod. Her roommate and her, excuse me, my roommate and I were not moved to D-pod due to any bad behavior or disciplinary action. When we arrived in D-pod, we were not allowed an hour out due to the fact that we had had time out in our previous pod, nor were we able to get cleaning supplies to clean the cell prior to or after moving. I received a roll of toilet paper upon entrance. Today, I unexpectedly received my period approximately two weeks in advance of its usual timing. 
I did not have any feminine hygiene products due to the move. I bled through my uniform and I expected to bleed through the second and last uniform in my possession if I was not immediately given feminine hygiene products. I first used normal course methods to gain the pod officer's attention that was on duty. She did not hear or see me with the disciplinary inmates that were out for their hour. I used the cell intercom to notify them of the emergency of bleeding through my uniforms, requesting pads immediately to avoid bleeding through my last uniform. And the pod officer could not hear or see me so that I could get them. The officer, Warren in all caps and in parentheses here, I'll highlight that, on the cell intercom responded, okay, okay. Approximately no more than five minutes later, Sergeant Wolf showed up at the pod officer's desk, and then pod officer Chow opened the cell door and said, I was called to medical. I indicated the stained clothes piled on the floor that I had just hand washed. Why I had used the cell intercom to request the pads as described above, and that I did not request medical or a sick call. I stated there has been a misunderstanding and that I obviously did not make a request for medical. I was told that I would have to go to medical and refuse it. I responded that I would go to medical and explain it to them with a non-consent refusal if they insisted or charged me for services not requested. It was after that Officer Chow told me it was actually mental health I was being called for. I asked, how is a bleed-through and a request for pads get confused for a call to see a mental health official. In parentheses here, important note, I have personally observed other inmates request said, and it took between four to six weeks for a purported mental health official to meet with them. <clears throat> so I think what she's trying to say here is that important note, other inmates have requested mental health officials, and it took four to six weeks for them to get one in there. I told Officer Chow that I did not request to see medical or mental health official. Officer Chow responded that she didn't know what was going on just to go to the slider. <coughs> Officer Chow informed us that Roger D. Wilson, detention, <coughs> excuse me, detention facility, 2C and 208, had similar toilet breakage after we did. Those inmates did not get moved to D-Pod. Sergeant Wolf escorted me to the slider from the pod. I opened and held the slider door open for the sergeant as she pushed packs of toilet paper and a large box of pads into the hall. Sergeant asked Officer Warren if she was ready for me, and Officer Warren yelled back, not yet, or similar to that effect. Sergeant Wolf left me in the slider without pads. During the approximately... No more than five minutes in the slider, I asked officers <coughs> Warren and Chow for pads and was not given any at this time. Officer Warren opened the door and I spoke with her at the central desk in the main hall in front of 15 plus waiting inmates. I immediately explained to Officer Warren what had happened, each specific and particular detail as summarized above, and requested to be given pads immediately, again due to current soiling of my last uniform. I also informed her that I did not request to see medical or mental health official. Officer Warren responded that she did not know anything and told me to go into the room down the hall and at my left, whose door was open, and talk to mental health. I said I would do an official refusal and explanation there because I could not fathom how a bleed through and reasonable request for pads turns into any competent individual thinking I requested to see a mental health official or worse, ordering me to see one without my due consent. I have never requested to see a medical or mental health official. I have never consented for mental health official, specialist, or otherwise licensed individual to meet with me. After I gave said notifications, I was walked down the hall to the open office door. Officer Warren told me, just go to the slider. 
I requested clarification, whether I was to lodge an official explanation and refusal with the purported mental health official in that office first before going to the slider. Officer Warren clarified I was just to go directly to the slider. I passed and saw the purported mental health official sitting at a desk listening. An inmate hall worker that witnessed the conversation handed me four pads as I entered the slider, and Officer Chow gave me two more. Uh, and then this is abruptly the end of the report. Um, I wonder if there was any more to this email. Perhaps there was. It may have been uh, redacted by either William Ferguson or Francis Lloyd. Uh, but, but there we've got it. Um, in the next video that I'm going to do, let's see. We've got... Hmm. We've got another document to read, and it's going to be the inmate manual for the Roger D. Wilson detention facility. Let me just find where that is. All right. So in my next video, we're going to get into this document over here, the Knox County Sheriff's Office Inmate Handbook. It's, it's a pretty interesting read. Uh, most of the lunacy family out there already knows that I used to work uh, in a county jail in California. Did that for a few months, and it has to be one of the least favorite uh, jobs that I've ever had in my entire life. And if you can hear my cat in the background, she is agreeing, even though she was not incarnate at the time. <laughs> um, so we're going to get all these policies and procedures out to the light of day, and everybody's going to know exactly the procedures and policies that the Knox County Sheriff's Office is supposed to be using, purports to be using, at the Roger D. Wilson uh, detention facility in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is a pretty surprising, hmm, intense read, intense email. I, I guess it's not really surprising given everything else that's gone on. I certainly wasn't expecting uh, this kind of information to continually flow from Hat J. Um, our correctional facilities, our court systems, our legal justice systems, all of it's broken entirely backwards, upside down, inside out, broken. And it's time to walk away from it all. If you've got any love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy at protonmail.com. I've had an awful lot of emails, an awful lot of comments, uh, feels like there's some energy building in this whole Hat J experience uh, and all different facets of it. And, you know, the big question is, why now? Why now? I love you guys a lot. We will be back and we're going to read through this uh, Knox County Sheriff inmate manual. Peace out.